Yo, what is up guys, and welcome back to another episode of Slice of Shonen. I'm your host, The Cloudy Crow, and today we'll be reacting to Doro episode 15. Now, I know I'm a bit late, but after this video, I should be fully caught up on all the anime I was behind on. Um, the first anime I'll be reacting to that I'm actually caught up on will be Kimetsu no Yaiba episode 4. So, look out for that. But anyways, in the last episode of Dororo, we were just doing our usual with Dororo and Hiyakimaru walking down the road, pretty much going wherever the wind takes us, and we end up bumping into this orphanage-like place where we find these spirits. One is like a giant, weird baby that thinks Dororo is its mom, and then there's this lady with, uh, she's kind of like losing hair, and I don't know what they're supposed to represent exactly, but we do know that the building that was burned down was actually an orphanage where this lady took care of all these kids and she worked them to death, she beat them, it was a horrible place to live, and then it ended up being burned down. Now whether it was intentional or not, we don't 100% know, but we did find oil near the burned down building, so that brings me to believe that it might have been intentional, but we don't have any leads as to who did it or why they did it. And then we meet Lord Sabame, which, he's, he doesn't blink, he's so weird, like, he just stares, he has, like, fish eyes, it's, it's really creepy, and I want to know what that dude's deal is, but anyways, he brings us over the village, over to his village, he actually tells us about the story of the orphanage, and then he invites us to stay the night, and while we're sleeping there, we bump into this weird moth larva thing with two sets of arms that tries to kill Doro and Hiyakimaru and Hiyakimaru ends up making you know quick work with him and then he calls its mother which is this gigantic moth that comes in through the front door she like puts in this like kind of smoke dust that seems to be poisonous I'm not 100% sure but then the next time we see the moth, it's right next to Lord Sabame, and it turns into a moth woman, which is so weird. So she's working with Lord Sabame, I think she's mind controlling him, but the only way you can find out is through this episode right here. So if you guys are excited, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on the episode down below, and subscribe for more Slice Shonen content. But with that being said, let's get right into this video. Alright, so here we go, we're about to get right into the video. Guys, pull up your source videos. If you don't have one, there will be one linked in the description. Linked in the description. Alright, and we'll be starting this in 3, 2, 1, go. Alright. Mappa. Mappa the motorcycle man. All right. We're still inside of that room, aren't we? And Doro's just eating like nothing happened. Just chilling. All right, we're eating good out here, though. He's feeding us pretty well. And here he is, dude. Look at, he literally looks like a fish. Like, he has fish eyes, he has the fish mouth. Like, I think somebody said his name is like a pun relating to fish, but I'm not 100% sure. How the heck did you sleep after seeing that thing? I don't, I don't know how you did it, Doro. I wouldn't be able to sleep for at least a week after seeing something that disgusting. Nah, this is where you go. This is where you leave, Doro. Whenever someone lets you stay, cool. You stay the night. Well, they ask for you to stay longer. That's when you know you gotta go. I doubt that. I highly doubt that. Ooh, what do you see? Oh, yeah! He has that weird red aura on the outside, but he's white on the inside. And I think that's why Hiyakimaru is not attacking him. Because, like, I think he's being controlled. I think that's what that red aura is. That's someone else's influence over him. Ooh. 
All right, we're getting real. How can Dora make light of such a creepy situation, man? That was literally the most disgusting thing I've seen this entire freaking um, season so far. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, we're judging him. We're judging him, dude. There is some screws definitely loose with that guy. Oh, let me turn it down a bit so none of this gets into the video. But yeah, I said this in the end of my last video, and I just want to repeat it one more time so you guys can kind of get my theory. So, I think that the one controlling Sabami is obviously the moth woman. How she's doing it, I don't know. Ooh, what if it's that smoke? That smoke that she put into the room on Hyakimaru and Dororo? What if it was that smoke that's, like, brainwashing him? And it's slowly gonna begin to affect them, and she's gonna brainwash them, too. And Hyakimaru might snap out of it or something. I don't know. It's just a theory, just a thought. You guys share your own theories you had, but, um... Yeah, there's definitely some screws loose with that guy. Oh, and there she is! Who is that? They looked just like Dororo. Like an older version of Dororo. Older Tanner Dororo. Man. All I'm gonna say... Oh. I was about to say best duo 2019, but uh... Saitama and Genos are right there, so I don't know. These guys do make a pretty great duo, though. The story of the scene from hell. Alright, that's a pretty deep, meaningful intro. Or title, I guess. What happened to him? Oh, they look like they're living a pretty happy life. Like, everybody in this village is cool, except for Sabame. Sabame is the only one that's a bit off. These guys genuinely seem really nice, though. Look, they even brought tea? Free of charge? Come on, now. Hmm? Mmm, I don't know about that. Who said that? Oh. They're all the way in the background, dude. I didn't even notice them. All right. <laughs> Look at her face, dude. <laughs> there you go. It looks a lot better when you zoom in. When we were zoomed out far like that, she looked like... I don't, she looks so clueless. Okay, we can zoom back out for her, though. Oh my gosh. She almost looks as weird as Sabame. Man, is this the first old person we've seen in this anime? Because if we did, I don't remember any of the others looking that weird. Look at her face, dude. She looks like she could be, like, Sabame's mom or something. Hey, I feel you, Grandma. I gotta get back on the grind. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, what? Whoa, you saw that? 
They were like, <laughs> they tried to turn around, bro. That that is not a coincidence, dude. That guy's holding a freaking sickle or whatever in his hand. He's glaring over at Doro, and as soon as he looks over at him, they look away and get back to work, dude. Maybe this village isn't as freaking cool as I thought it'd be. Oh, yeah, Hiyakimaru said he was going to keep his eye on Sabame. <gasps> oh, man. Oh, man. I think he's about to meet up with you-know-who. And Hiyakimaru was on him, dude. Oh, man. We lost him. Oh! He knew! Oh no! Sabame knew we were coming! Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Ah, see what you did there, Doro? Something's fishy. I get it, I get it. What? <laughs> dude, their faces when they were glaring at him, dude. They were glaring like he just farted in public. <laughs> just another rice storehouse. Hey, start getting to collecting, Dororo. You don't always get fed. For free, at least. So you better grab that rice, put it in the bag, take it for when you go on the road. A trap door. Ooh, what are they hiding under this? <gasps> oh no! These dudes have been plotting! And they just shove them in there. I swear if there's those moth larva things, dude... Oh my gosh. I'm gonna freaking hurl. The ghouls that live here. Oh, yeah. The baby and the the woman. But I don't think... I don't think we're still trying to kill them. Also, it looks like Hiyakimaru hasn't slept. Maybe because he was protecting Doro all night. Making sure no nothing happened to her. <clears throat> Oh no, nope, nope, I'm, oh my, I'm, I'm out, nope, I'm, uh, uh, those things are so freaking gross, man, ah, oh, god, imagine if you, like, woke up and you found that thing just laying on top of you with its arms pinning you down, oh my gosh, Dang. Oh my gosh. Who was them? Okay. Wait, the ghouls? But why is it showing like the moth's wings right there? And then a flower? Oh wait, I'm dumb. 
I'm dumb. Ghouls aren't the same as ghosts. But why are they called ghouls though? They look like just like moth monsters. Oh no. Well, I guess they are not really uh, your average everyday moth. Oh, they got him. Got him with that string shot. Ooh, uh, that is not good. What the heck are those? baby what so did he take the orphans and feed them to the to the larva and that's the spirit of one of the orphans and it talks well I mean we knew it said mom but this baby can formulate sentences out here. What? So that spirit represented all the kids. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Oh, wow. I mean, granted, she did deserve... Well, we don't know if she deserved it. Maybe this was all a story he made up. What? Oh, my. And he could see all of that. She. She saw all of that. Wow, so her name is Mai Mai, the moth woman. So he killed the owner of the orphanage and fed the kids to the larva. Wow, so he was lying to us. Oh no. They grew up. Ugh. I mean, they're not nearly as bad as the larva. They actually look kind of cool, actually. What? Oh my! And Hiyakimaru could see that! He saw everything that this man did through just his aura. <gasps> oh! Did you see that when he like cut his body in half? That thing is struggling. Yeah. <laughs> Get him out of here. <laughs> These things are monsters, actually. How can it still move? Oh. Hey, we cut ourselves free, though. Those things are pretty freaking durable. Didn't Hiyakimaru, like, cut open that larva and it was still able to, like, scream and cry for its mother or whatever? And my last question. Oh, my... Dang, that thing just suicide bombed into the freaking watchtower. But are all of the moths like humanoids? Or was it just that one? Those bastards.
What about the other spirit? Oh! That woman is the nun! It all makes sense now! Oh dang, we found the jackpot. These guys are guilty as heck. Yeah, watch your village burn. Good. Hey, you probably won't. I'm gonna be honest, you guys probably won't. Maybe, hopefully you guys have learned your lesson from what you did to those kids. Oh, snap, his leg. His leg fell apart. Oh, wait, is, no, wait, hmm. Is that the leg that got ripped off by that sand monster? Because he has, well, I don't know. Did he ever have both of his real legs at the same time? Actually, the only way I can know is if I knew that the insect took his right or left leg. Because that leg that shattered could have been his leg that he never grew back. Or it could have been like the prosthetic that he put underneath that leg. Underneath the leg that got uh, ripped off. And is this the mother or what? It just looks like a maybe bigger version of the other ones. Ooh, cook them. So these things. Hmm. They definitely have to be like some kind of. I don't know. When they die, it's so weird. They don't die normally like that one that ran into the tower <gasps> oh okay oh my god i thought that was his actual spine bending like that but he grew a sp <laughs> yakimaru finally grew a spine huh <laughs> oh man so he got his spine back. That's good. I don't know if that'll help him, you know, give him an advantage at all, but. <sighs> oh, what the heck? And Hyakimaru just straight up said, not my concern. He doesn't care. Oh! Oh! Doro said it. We're back with Tahomaru. And the boy, the savior, out here saving lives. Oh, they're training him to get better with his combat now that he only has one eye. Wow, dude, Tahomaru's coming back with a vengeance. And Hyakimaru needs to get some sleep, man. Oh, so did Sabame wait? No, 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 Sabame, or not Sabame, Daigo, I don't think Daigo had the red aura around him, he had the little specks, but I don't think he had the aura coating him, like Sabame. Wait, oh, this is the guy that stabbed his dad in the back. Get out of here, dude.
How did he find that? And how does he know about this? Wow. Okay. So, that's so weird how he knows about this map. Didn't, um... Dai- Dai- Oh my gosh. I'm mixing everyone's names up now. Didn't Doro's mom and dad plan to put the maps on, um, the mom and Doro's back after they were betrayed by Itachi? Like, back when they weren't on good terms? So how did Itachi find out about this map? And how did he get that piece of it? That's so weird. That's really weird. Also, Itachi looks a lot different now with that beard. He looks... He definitely looks older. He looks more like an uncle now. But, um... Yeah, there was that. There were the moths and everything, which... I guess we found out the truth. That's for sure. We found out that Sabame and the villagers were actually the ones that burned down the orphanage. They took the kids, fed them to the moths, and basically in return the moths agreed that their land would prosper kind of like the deal Daigo made and then their village ended up burning down and I guess you could say it's kind of karma for what they did so maybe this is kind of a what is the word I'm looking for uh, foreshadowing of what's gonna happen to Daigo and his people for the deal that they made but obviously Daigo's deal is a lot more extreme Daigo has control over a lot more land and a lot more people so who knows if it's going to be exactly the same and then after that towards the end we had Hyakimaru and Dai I'm mixing everyone's names man Hyakimaru and Dororo where basically Dororo said that all Hyakimaru thinks about is killing these demons and if he you know just focuses on that then he's no he's no different than the monster he's no different than the demons he's trying to kill so I think there is beginning to, a divide is beginning to kind of come in between Doro and Hiyakimaru's friendship that they had, and um, it's, they're definitely not on the same page anymore, which might become a problem later on into the series. But anyways, overall I enjoyed this episode, and I think a good question for you guys would be, ooh, I guess this could be kind of a throwback question. So you know Itachi's decision where basically he started fighting with Dororo's dad, where they were basically fighting for the for the poor, for the people that were too weak to fight back against the government, and then he ended up changing his mind and working under the government because he was promised, you know, money, food, basically a better living overall. So, what do you guys think your decision would be? Would you stick with, you know, Dororo's dad and his group, the rebellion fighting against the government, or would you join the government and instead work under them and realize, like, you know what? I mean, if you can't beat them, join them. They got food over there. They got training. They got numbers. They got power. So why not just go over there and better my life instead of still living this crappy life while, you know, trying to fight for something that you might never get. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on the episode down below, and subscribe for more Slice Shonen content. But with that being said, I'm going to head out, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.